but I want to show you something on why they're cleaning up. Take a look at this. A lot of businesses, just like Oxford Tavern here, put down these steel doors to make sure that the looting doesn't happen. It didn't work. Take a look right now over here. We're going to walk inside the store now. This used to be a glass pane. CJ, if you could be careful walking in here. Let me just show you what's inside. What's the aftermath of the looters that went as they went through this tavern? Bulletproof glass didn't matter. They broke through it, went through, and stole everything off the shelves. Watch out, there's some sharp glass here. And uh, the smell of alcohol is overwhelming, really, when you come in here. But if you can, show the floor just a little bit, CJ. Let's see what we're walking through here. Just empty bottles, wood, um, tiles from floors, and pieces of the wall. There was uh, obviously a lottery machine that was been uh, pilfered, too. And they didn't even bother busting the locks. They broke the glass and went through. This is where the tavern was, the bar where you can sit and just go order drinks. The mirror in there, CJ, if you can pop in there, there's still some neon signs lit up in here as uh, everything is just stripped clean and bottles on the floor. Now, if you come back behind me here, one last thing for you, Patrice, I want to show you something too. We discovered, wasn't sure what this was from in here. I wasn't sure if it was an alarm system or not, but you can see still tools left over from trying to rip apart certain pieces of this in the back of a ATM machine. This is what was uh, stripped through. So somebody was working on this for quite some time. As you see, bent metal. There's still tools on the ground left over from where they were trying to work on that ATM machine, pulling it all open, stripped down the outside, the front of it. Now, I was outside earlier when we were cleaning up with the crew. They were cleaning up all the glass off of the corner. I want to show you who showed up since we last spoke. City Crews just showed up about five minutes ago. They're helping out Terry and his buddy Johnson there, now cleaning up the piles that they've been sweeping up since 2.30. So some relief there. We're getting back to some normalcy as the sun is starting to show a little bit of light as we look over at North Avenue. Back to you, Patrice. Tom, I, I just want to go back to that tavern for a minute because to see what you're showing us in there, there is absolutely nothing left in there. There is nothing on any of those shelves. And I'm sure yesterday that was a fully stocked business. Yeah, uh, nothing there today. Yeah, it, it's unbelievable. I mean, you can see how fast they went through. They busted out this steel door. I mean, you can see the owners had, had taken a lot of time, spent a lot of money trying to secure this establishment, but it didn't matter. Pried off the steel bars here, um, padlocks ripped apart, and then went through all the coolers. The cooler lights are still up. The coolers are still working, too. I mean, it's not like there's no electricity in here. There's one bottle left. One bottle that they weren't able to grab in the back here. Bones Fuzzy Naval back there and a Modella 16 ounce just to give you a perspective that certain things were left behind but piles of bottles and glass and this is just one establishment all four corners were looted here um, we have other crews that are out here too uh, that just showed up they're getting some other shots of different places too of the other establishments that were looted but the smell of alcohol and um, smoke is still left and it, it's almost like the end of a, of a war zone here yeah. as, as people just came through here, grabbed what they could, and took off back out of here. I, well, and I spoke to uh, one police officer yesterday, uh, a friend of mine. I was you know, checking in with a couple of them that I know throughout the day to make sure that they were okay. And that's what he said. He said, I feel like I'm back in Iraq. He said, I feel like we are in a war zone. And as we yeah. watched the video yesterday, you were mentioning all four corners. At the intersection where you do have the four corners and the stores on each corner, People were just going in and out. There was no stopping them. There was no, right. uh, there, were, there wasn't a lot of police presence or a lot that police could do at that point, I suppose. They were just going in and out, having their way with, um, with these people's businesses and livelihood. That's right. Patrice, we heard Commissioner Bat say in that announcement, they were just outnumbered and outflanked. And that's mm -hmm. exactly what happened here. They just, they had to pick their battles. North and Fulton was just one that they had to let go, and this is what we're seeing, the aftermath of it, as ATMs just walls ripped apart, and the, this is what it looks like. This is what the aftermath of looting looks like inside just one establishment, and this is just a few hours. I, I mean, I just, just looking down, every time we look down, we see something different. There's a, a part of a baseball bat that was probably used at one point, either, uh, and you can see it here. And then this is the b remainder of a door that was on the back of that ATM. The lock's still there, but they just went right through the door. And, and Tommy, you were showing just how, incredible how, how, I mean, it, there were efforts to keep this store secure. When you see those gates up, you, you normally think, all right, well, people aren't going to be able to get in here. So this wasn't just an opportunity. Right. They saw a store and, okay, it's, it, it's, we can easily get in here. It, there was time and effort and intent 
on getting into that store to loot it and rob it and leave it in a shambles. They had time. They knew they had time. They, yeah. There was no rush, really. I think there was a panic at first, but then people said they took their time. I mean, this is the back end of a, of a hammer handle here. And CJ, I don't know if you could get a close shot of this, but look at how thick this glass is. This is one of those turntables yeah. where you uh -huh. order what you want from the cashier and they spin it around and put it right there. So yeah, Patrice, it's just every time you look around, there's something else that stands out that just is mind blowing, really. And, and that's why they said this was not about protesting. This was not about Freddie Gray. Uh, Freddie Gray was buried, put to rest yesterday. His family wanted peace, his family wanted calm. This was not about him. This was, as people are saying, this was more about lawlessness and just uh, opportunistic people taking advantage of what's a tragic situation for the city. It's just, it's, it's, it's just a sad day for Baltimore. Yeah, Patrice, um, I, I know that last night when they were they came out with the state of the emergency and um, the mayor was actually speaking at a MEMA, the end of that and the beginning of that, right when, right when um, we had our governor speak too, mm -hmm. the governor was standing there a little bit later on at MEMA and he was standing there with Major General Singh. And it was very interesting because of one of the very first things she said was she mentioned martial law. And that's what really got everyone's ears abuzz when she said martial law. If this had continued for a few more hours, we may see martial law here in Baltimore. We are not under that, but it, it's a possibility, which is just un unbelievably scary. As, yeah. um, as we're speaking, there's some burnout cars that are driving down North Avenue on the back of tow trucks. I mean, it's just no matter which direction you look, Patrice, you see something else that just it, you can't even explain it. You just right. have to see it. Something else that we should not be seeing in our city that is not representative of, of Baltimore. All right, Tom, thank you.